we are going to go to a video that Dade Phelan, um, of Dade Phelan in his district, answering a question from a constituent about Democrat chairs. Okay. And uh, this is just uh, some local event there in Beaumont. And I think I will, I will say this, you, the whole thing's like, I think 15 minutes. I don't have time for that. So I've narrowed it down to four minutes, the four most relevant minutes. Okay. And I just want to make it clear. I'm not taking Dade feeling out of context at all. He makes it very clear in the video that he's for Democrat chairs. And he's very mad at the people that are against him for being for Democrat chairs. So let's go to this clip. I've asked you this before, but not in this group. Please explain to people why and how it came about. And because that seems, this seems to be a general thing in people that are mad at you. Why we appoint Democratic chairs and oh, who the chairs are and how much power do they really have? And can they keep something from coming to you to go to the floor? Every Republican speaker has has appointed Democratic chairs. Every Republican lieutenant governor has appointed Democratic chairs, including the current lieutenant governor as we speak right now. Okay, so first of all, just spoiler alert, he will never answer the question that she said, which is, can they keep a bill from coming to you? 100% they can, okay? So he doesn't answer that question, but it's not in his best interest to answer that question. Second of all, he says, all the other Republicans did it. That's kind of his whole excuse if you listen to this whole thing, like, they all did it. Why can't I do it? And then also he says, well, everyone's appointed Democrat chairs, even the lieutenant governors, even the lieutenant governor as we speak right now, which is funny because he can't say Dan Patrick's name, but he can't stand Dan Patrick. And we already talked to you about this a couple of weeks ago, but Dan Patrick just replaced the last remaining Democrat chair with a Republican. So he literally went in. John Whitmire just got elected mayor in Houston and replaced him with Pete Flores. The Texas Senate, for the first time under Republican leadership, has only Republican chairman, which is a legislative priority of the Republican Party of Texas. So you have to understand that Dan Patrick had won this last session and he replaced him with a Republican and now has zero as we speak right now. Let's continue. When I put a point of chair of, say, natural resources, I mean, what, what conservative policy is not getting passed out of natural resources or transportation? I mean, we're not talking Republican Democrat fights in transportation. You know what we're talking about? Houston versus Dallas. <laughs> and Southeast Texas getting our fair share. Um, again, I had predecessors who were Republicans. Okay, so he then talks about how, oh, well, if you're like a Democrat chair of transportation, that doesn't matter, right? Natural resources, right? Okay, I want you to understand that the lawmakers who have the most important policy in natural resources are Republican lawmakers. They are Republican rural lawmakers in East Texas and West Texas, Central Texas, all over the place. These lawmakers, if a Democrat chairs natural resources, are beholden to that Democrat to even have their bill heard, which means if they're on the floor and you go to them, and by the way, I've been in these discussions, you go to a lawmaker and say, hey, you need to fight this amendment. This is a bad bill. Can you oppose this thing? And they'll say, Hey, I would, but I have this hearing next week in natural resources and I need my bill on the list to be heard. You've handed the Democrats this massive amount of leverage they're going to use to then keep Republicans on the sidelines on key battles. Now, next, Dade's going to go in and start talking about certain committees he made the change on. Let's listen to that. Who appointed Democrat chairs to public health. That decides all the pro-life issues. I didn't do it. I put a staunch conservative in there. That's why we have the most conservative, pro-life piece of legislation in any state. We passed the heartbeat bill, we passed the trigger bill. Other states have 10, 14, 16 weeks. Texas is zero weeks. It's the most conservative pro-life bill, period. Most conservative, uh, some of my predecessors, that have Republicans, they appointed Democrats to chair Homeland Security. That's all the Second Amendment legislation. I didn't do it. I put James White in there. Y'all know James White? Yeah. yeah. I put James White in. What did we get? Constitutional carry. Plus probably 11 to 12 other excellent, you know, I would call landmark bills that other states are trying to pass when it comes to the Second Amendment. Uh, NRA endorsed me. They gave me an A+. Plus. Um, 
which is hard to get. They only get about two or three A pluses in the entire legislature every cycle. So this to me just reminds us why we actually are fighting the Democrat chair issue. Democrat chairs came up, the vote was taken, all these freedom caught, Briscoe King got up, he made a speech about it, all these different things. And all of a sudden, all these members were on record voting publicly saying, I want Democrats to chair committees, which now means that they're responsible for every Democrat chair the speaker appoints. So when Dennis Bonin put re- Democrats in charge of the abortion legislation and gun legislation, all of a sudden those guys are going to Dade and going, hey, you better not put Democrats there because we just voted for Democrat chairs. We backed you up on this. But if you put Democrats in charge of those committees, we're going to get roasted back home. Please don't put Democrats on those committees. And Dade, needing to respond to the people that helped get him there, said, OK, I'm not going to put Democrats in charge of those committees, but I'm putting them in charge of 40% of the committees. Still. He then talks about the fact that I've appointed, at one point in this talk, he was like, I've appointed less Democrats than anybody ever. Which, by the way, from last session to this session, he decreased the number of Democrats chairing committees. Why? Because it's such a big issue. Nobody was ever talking about it. We put it on the Republican primary ballot. The party did that. The grassroots did that. They stepped up. Every one of us voted for it. 80 plus percent of Texans all said this needs to happen. We put the pressure on these guys and they're moving every single session on this issue. And Dade's deal is, well, I didn't do what Dennis Bonin did. He doesn't mention the name, by the way, but it's Joe Strauss and Dennis Bonin. But he can't because Dennis is like a lobbyist and Dennis's brother, he's appointed to chair appropriations. And he lets Dennis strategize around a lot of house leadership stuff. So he doesn't want to throw him under the bus, but he's also trying to speak him, you know, give himself kudos and a pat on the back. So in doing so, he kind of has to throw him under the bus. So he disguises him in this term past predecessors. But what he's saying is Dennis Bonin appointed Democrats to chair public health and public safety. And by the way, Jared Patterson and all these other moderate schmucks, they all back up Dennis Bonin every day. They back up the Democrats he put in charge. They didn't get mad about that. They didn't get mad about date given 40% and they didn't get mad when he decreased it. See, we actually like the momentum on this issue. We went from not having Democrats chair public health and public safety. That was a great win two sessions ago. Last session, Democrats actually went down. That's a good win, but it's not where it needs to be until it's where Dan Patrick is gone, which is zero, zero. Let's continue. There's a narrative out there that I created this Democratic chair thing. No, I wasn't even alive when it started. And I'm far from the first Republican to ever do it. And actually, this last cycle, I appointed fewer Democratic chairs than any other speaker has ever appointed in the history of, say, Texas as far as a Republican. And so it's, it's a false narrative. Um, our party chair loves to talk about it. He was in the legislature for two cycles, and guess what? He never offered any solution to it. He talked about how we should pass a we should pass a, a rule this cycle that says no Democrat chair they should be in the House rules. Why didn't he propose that when he was in the House? He didn't bother to do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be. I asked that question to him. So thank you for asking it. It's- so clearly Matt Rinaldi is really bugging Dade Feeling, which is fun to see the frustration. This is always another kind of defense like, oh, well, since nobody fought to ban Democrat chairs in 2017 or 2019 or 20, you know, 15, then we don't need to ban Democrat chairs. And here's the reality. Grassroots Republicans weren't fighting. It was never a legislative priority. It was never anything we tried to push. But it is now. And you know what? There are some Republicans that woke up and said, my gosh, we should ban this entire practice all out instead of just complaining about it. Let's actually ban it. Conservatives for a long time opposed the speaker and they would oppose the speaker's appointments of Democrat chairs. But now that it is a set rules fight, it's something each Republican individually has to own. I love that Dade says everyone's saying I came up with this. First of all, nobody's saying you came up with this, Dade. None of us have said you came up with this. What we have told people, including everyone in your district, is that you appoint Democrats to chair committees. And the average person in Beaumont or Orange County who hears that goes, why are you doing this? They assume you're the first person that did it because it seems so dumb that it was happening in the first place. And when you come back to them and go, well, everybody else did it. I didn't do it to start. That's not that great of a defense. 
But I love how he goes, there's this narrative out there that I'm the one who started this. None of us had to say that. All you had to say was tell his voters there's Democrat chairs, and they assume you started it because it sounds so dumb that they would have hoped that the Republicans that came before you wouldn't have done that. And your defense is, no, we've always operated in such a manner, which is what we talk about with the Texas heist. They always operate. If you haven't watched that documentary, go watch the documentary, the Texas heist. It's on YouTube, Texas scorecard. They've always empowered Democrats. And Dade Phelan still empowers Democrats. He's mad that Matt Rinaldi's talking to his voters about Democrat chairs. He's mad that even though he keeps making, giving Democrats less power, it's not enough. And it never, it won't be. It won't be until you take that power out of their hands, including the Transportation Committee, including Natural Resources, and all these other committees they use to hamstring Republicans every single day of the legislative session. Until we change our posture with the Democrat Party in Texas, we will not be able to advance the conservative priorities we need day in and day out. So I hope that this video is encouraging to you because you know what? All of you who are out there talking about these issues every single day, it's penetrating. It's making noise. It's actually making a difference because Dade Phelan's going into these places with his friends and they're like, hey, everyone mad at you seems to bring up this issue. What's What's the deal? And he's forced to answer them. So keep going out there. Keep talking to people. Keep bringing these issues up because these guys are held accountable. When they are held accountable, their excuses are pretty lame. 